Hello, this is Javier Castillo, and we'll be looking at the life and times of Charles Ives. Charles Ives was born on October 20th, 1874 in Danbury, Connecticut. Growing up, Charles Ives studied the piano, drums, and organ from various teachers, but it is his father, George Ives, who he considers his biggest influence. His father, George Ives, was a local bandmaster, church musician, and music teacher. He also fought in the Civil War as well. At 14 years old, Ives became a professional church organist, a career he would follow for most of his teens and 20s. During this time, Charles Ives began to write his earliest pieces of music, which were inspired by American vernacular music, such as parlor songs and marches, so the earliest traditional American music that was available at that time. Um, his favorite pastime was playing team sports, uh, becoming captain of his high school baseball team as a pitcher and later playing football at Yale. In 1893, Ives moved to New Haven, Connecticut to attend a preparatory school. He later enrolled in Yale University in 1894. At Yale, he took liberal arts courses and studied music theory and composition with Horatio Parker. Horatio Parker was a lot like George Ives, in that they were two multi-talented musicians, but in contrast, Horatio Parker was a lot more traditional in, the, in his approach to classical music, whereas George Ives was open-minded and uh, encouraged in experimentation. So when Charles Ives started studying with Horatio Parker, uh, they would headbutt a lot uh, because their backgrounds were so different. But at the end, the two would reach a compromise and they would develop a solid working relationship. Uh, while at Yale, Ives wrote his first two classical pieces, Yale Princeton Game and Symphony No. 1 in D minor. These two pieces are very different in styles. Um, Symphony No. 1 is written more in a late romantic style that's similar to Dvorak, and Yale Princeton Game uh, captures more of the characteristics that you would find in Charles Ives' music, uh, which is a, a blend of ideas to create something that would sound chaotic, but in a good way. After graduating in 1898, Ives moved to New York where he worked as a church organist. After resigning from his last organ job in 1902, Ives focused on an insurance career, starting as a $15 a week clerk at Mutual Life Insurance. After meeting Julian Merrick, they started their own insurance agency called Ives and Merrick, becoming one of the most successful agencies in the nation. In 1918, Ives published the book Life Insurance with Relation to Inheritance Tax, which would become a classic in the insurance field. He also pioneered the training of agents and the idea of estate planning. He would retire from the insurance agency in 1929 with his company profit earnings at $49 million, which adjusted for inflation would be a lot of money. As a composer, Charles Ives wrote four symphonies, two string quartets, a piano trio, four violin sonatas, and 200 songs. Ives was a fluent composer in four distinct styles. American vernacular music, which was the popular music uh, coming out of the United States at the time, such as uh, parlor songs and marches, uh, Protestant church music, European classical music, and experimental music. Style characteristics include quotation of hymns and popular tunes, uh, simultaneous events and ideas. Uh, basically, Charles Ives, he would write uh, a piece that would require two bands, and those two bands are supposed to be playing uh, two different pieces or in two different keys uh, at the same time. Uh, complex textures, sometimes with spatial separation. Uh, his music would often have a program or philosophical basis for its music. A good example of this would be The Unanswered Question, uh, a piece that poses the perennial question of existence. Um, and lastly, Uh, the use of sound experimentation, uh, such as the use of quarter tones and polytonal harmony. Charles Ives composed in near complete isolation, and much of his music was never performed in public during his lifetime. After 1918, Charles Ives ceased to compose new music, and he devoted the rest of his later life to promoting his music and revising older compositions. On May 19, 1954, Charles Ives died due to complications from double hernia surgery but for his contributions to classical music, he is considered the first American composer, and musicians such as 
Aaron Copeland, and our boy Leonard Bernstein, who consider themselves huge fans of Charles Ives. Uh, they helped to promote his music after his death. Thank you for watching. Be sure to bring your scorebook on Monday as we will be looking at General William Booth Enters into Heaven. And if time permits, we can look at some of his other works as well.